In our last video, we began to look at the adjusting journal entries for Jake's Consulting Inc., a big comprehensive problem. And in fact, we work through part A of the problem, which says prepare the adjusting journal entries. That's done. We're going to move on this time to part B, complete the adjusted trial balance. That's what we're doing now. So just to remind you what we've gone through, we've done an adjustment for prepaid insurance. We've done an adjustment for supplies, which are also a prepaid. We've done an adjustment for amortization on some furniture. We've also done an adjustment for some amortization on uh, a building. And remember, it's amortization expense, debit, credit, accumulated amortization. We've done an adjusting entry for an accrued expense, debit and expense, credit a payable, in this case, salaries expense and salaries payable. We've done an adjustment for an accrued revenue. We're always going to be debiting a receivable and crediting a revenue for an accrued revenue. The final entry was to fix or to adjust for an unearned consulting revenue or an unearned revenue. And in this case, we're always going to be debiting an unearned revenue and crediting a revenue as our fiscal year end adjustment. So we've done a series of adjustments. And now our job is to transfer those adjustments from the journal entry into the adjusted trial balance. And we're just going to do it one at a time. And I'm going to transfer them into the worksheet. So journal entry A, debit insurance expense, credit prepaid insurance. I go up to my worksheet. I find the insurance expense. Uh, there it is. And I'm going to debit it for, I believe it was $9,000. And again, I'm in the adjustments column here under debit. Now I'm going to credit prepaid insurance. There it is, adjustments column under credit for $9,000. I do the same thing for supplies. Our journal entry said debit supplies expense, credit supplies for $4,000. So I go up to my adjusted trial balance. I find supplies expense, $4,000. I credit supplies, which are under assets right near the top. There they are for $4,000. Okay, continuing on. Uh, debit amortization expense on the equipment, $1,600. Credit accumulated amortization on the equipment, $1,600. All right, so debit amortization expense on the equipment. There it is. Oh, it was on furniture. Pardon me. Uh, $1,600. I think I wrote the wrong thing in my journal entry. And I'm going to credit accumulated amortization on the furniture for $1,600. Yeah, I said equipment. I should have said, of course, furniture. Because that's what it was. Uh, for the buildings, I debit amortization expense on the building, 3000 credit accumulated amortization building, 3000 So debit amortization expense on the building, 3000 And I'm going to credit accumulated amortization on the building for 3000 Next up. Debit salaries expense, credit salaries payable, twenty four hundred. So debit salaries expense, credit salaries payable for two thousand and four hundred. Next up, debit accounts receivable, credit auxiliary revenue for seven thousand five hundred. So debit accounts receivable, 7,500. And we're going to credit auxiliary revenue for 7,500. Next up, debit unearned consulting revenue, credit consulting revenue for 2,000. Debit unearned consulting revenue 2000 credit consulting revenue for 2000 
So at this point, we filled in the adjustments column. We just need to total it and make sure that our debits equal our credits. I didn't do this in advance, so I'm going to have to quickly do this in my head. 4 and 9 is 13, 16, 16 and 4 brings us up to 20, 22, 29,500 in debits. And in our credits column, it should be just the same. 4, 13, 13, 16, 16 and 4 is 20. 22, 29,500. Yeah, absolutely. They do match. You can double check that for yourself, but they need to match. If you find these numbers don't match, there's been something wrong with your, either your transfer or with your journal entries. Remember, debits have to equal credits in our journal entries, so when we fill in the adjustments, it's just filling in journal entries, so debits have to equal credits again. If your totals don't match, you messed up. Okay. So we've completed uh, the adjustments column, but we haven't completed the question. We've got to do the adjusted trial balance, and we're going to have to fill in our adjusted trial balance. So the way we do it is we, we fill in every column, even ones that don't have adjustments, we need to fill in that row. So for cash, it started at 42,000. There was no adjustments, so it's going to end at 42,000. It wasn't changed. It was unadjusted. Accounts receivable started at 18,000. We've debited it by 7,500. So I had a debit of 18,000. I have an additional debit of 7,500. I'm going to end up at 25,500. If you have a debit and a debit, you add them together. If you have a credit and a credit, you're going to add them together as well. As you're going to see for supplies, if we have a debit and a credit, a debit of 7,000 for supplies, a credit of 4,000, you take the big one minus the small one. Whichever one is bigger minus whichever one is smaller, the big one gets the balance. So I've got a debit of 7, that's my big one, minus my credit of 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. The big one gets the balance, so the debit gets the balance. 3,000. Uh, prepaid insurance, big one is 12, the small one is 9. 12 debit minus 9 credit is 3,000 debit. Furniture was 8,000, unadjusted, still 8,000. Accumulated amortization furniture, 3,200 credit, 1,600 credit. I've got a credit and a credit. I just add them together, and the total is just a bigger credit. Building, 75,000 debit. So let's fill that in, 75,000 debit. Accumulated amortization building, 6,000 credit, 3,000 credit. It's a credit and a credit. We'll add them together and we get 9,000. Accounts payable, 13,000 credit was unadjusted, so it ends at 13,000 credit. Salaries and wages payable, 2,400 credit, unadjusted, ends at 2,400 credit. Unearned consulting revenue, uh, 2,500 credit and a 2,000 debit. Well, the big one is the credit, so I can take 2,500 minus 2,000, I end up with 500 credit. Again, credit is the big one, debit is the small one, so credit gets the balance when we've taken the difference. Dividends, 10,500 debit was unadjusted. Common shares, 2,000 credit, again unadjusted. Retained earnings, $26,000 unadjusted. Consulting revenue, 183 credit, 2,000 credit. If it's two credits or two debits, you just add them together, so 183 and 2 is 185. Uh, auxiliary revenue, 2,000 credit, 7,500 credit equals 9,500 credit. Amortization expense on the furniture, 1,600 credit and zero, or 1,600, pardon me, debit and zero debit. Just add them together, you get 1,600 debit. Uh, buildings, zero debit, 3,000, so it's just going to be 3,000 debit. Uh, from here, it's all going to be debits. They're all expenses, so we're expecting them to be debits. 25 and 2400 is 27,400. Uh, 6 and 9 is 15. 12,000 is not adjusted. 14,000 and 4,000 is 18,000. Advertising expense is 7. Telephone expense is 1200 unadjusted, and now we're done. But a key part here, the whole reason we're doing this is to make sure it still balances. Our, if, if our unadjusted trial balance balances, 
our adjustments balance well this has to balance if it doesn't balance it means we've done bad math somewhere so we're gonna have to add this up I'm gonna just use the calculator tool here in Windows uh, you can use uh, whatever you like and if you'd like you can fast forward to the end here as I do this or you can watch me kind of slowly calculate everything but I want to make sure it's right so 42,000 uh, plus 25,500 plus 3,000 plus 3,000 plus 8,000 plus 75,000 plus and we'll scroll down a bit here Uh, 10,500 plus 1,600 plus 3,000 plus 27,400 plus, and this is, it's painstaking, but there's no other way to do this, plus 15,000 plus 12,000 plus 18,000 plus 7,000 plus 1,200 equals 252,200. Okay, so I'm going to fill that in as my debits and I'm going to hope like heck my credits match. 252,200. I know it's a little messy, but you'll remember that amount. And I'll underline it twice. It's the bottom line. Let's scroll up and we'll do our credits now. So the first credit is there at 4,800. Clear this. So 4,800 plus 9,000 plus. 13,000 plus 2,400 plus 500 plus 2,000 plus 26,000 plus 185,000 plus 90, oops, 9,500. And I think that's it. And sure enough, when we add up our credits, we get 252, 200, our debits and credits match. We're done with our adjusted trial balance worksheet. The question asked us to complete the adjusted trial balance, and now we've done it. A couple of things before I move on that I want you to make note of. One, cash is never adjusted, right? adjusting entries never involve cash so if you've got a debit or credit there under adjustments under cash you screwed up because cash is not an account that gets adjusted cash is just a part of regular transactions another thing you should note your debits or your uh, rather your assets we're all expecting to see as debits so here are all my assets from cash there's my pen there it is uh, from cash all the way down to the bottom of accumulated amortization buildings we're expecting to see these all be debits except for accumulated amortization which is of course a contra asset account and so sure enough they all check out I wouldn't want to see any credits in here by supplies or accounts receivable it's it's not it's pretty unusual so these are my assets and these should be debits except for accumulated amortization my liabilities should all be credits and here are my liabilities. They are credits, so that's good. My dividends should be a debit, and it is. My common shares retained earnings should be credits. My shareholders' equity accounts here should be credits, and they are. My revenues need to be credits, and they absolutely are. Here's my two revenues. And finally, my expenses need to be debits, and you can see all of my expenses are, in fact, debits. And if I had one that was not a debit, I would double-check why. I would say, what was the adjustment I did that caused that not to be a debit? Because probably there's a mistake there. Expenses absolutely need to be debits. Okay. So we've worked through our adjusted trial balance. We're to the end of it. The next logical step would actually be to make financial statements from this. We would prepare an income statement which is just a summary of revenues and expenses and if I look right here zoom out one more step I've actually got an income statement right here because I have 
my revenues and my expenses, right? And revenues and expenses make up an income statement. Probably I could have used a different color, maybe red. Oop, red. Let's try it again. So there's an income statement sitting right there. I just summarize my revenue, summarize my expenses, get net income. I also have a balance sheet because I've listed my assets, then my liabilities, and then my shareholders equity account. So I have a balance sheet sitting right there as well. So it's very easy to prepare financial statements at this point. We're not going to do that in this problem, but what we are going to do is prepare a closing journal entry, and that's going to be in the next video. So please tune over to that one.